from Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 9 o'clock news. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Russ Riesinger, Vice President Mike Pence and Democratic Vice Presidential Candidate, California Senator Kamala Harris, going head to head in their first and only vice presidential debate tonight. Natalie Brand reports from Salt Lake City. With new COVID-19 protections in place, the coronavirus remained front and center as Vice President Mike Pence and Senator Kamala Harris squared off in Utah. The American people have witnessed what is the greatest failure of any presidential administration. From the very first day, President Donald Trump has put the health of America first. Senator Harris, a former prosecutor, went after the Trump administration's pandemic response. Whatever the vice president is claiming the administration has done, clearly it hasn't worked. When you're looking at over 210,000 dead bodies. Vice President Pence, the leader of the coronavirus task force, defended it. President Trump and I trust the American people to make choices in the best interest of their health. After the chaotic first presidential debate last week, the candidates tried to stay on message. Donald Trump paid $750 in taxes. The American people have a president who is a businessman, it's a job creator, who's paid tens of millions of dollars in taxes. With President Trump's COVID-19 diagnosis and both the president and Joe Biden in their 70s, this debate gave voters a chance to see how these candidates might handle the presidency if ever called upon. You know, Joe and I were raised in a very similar way. We were raised with values that are about hard work. Uh, the reality is uh, we've got an election before the American people in the midst of this challenging year, and the stakes have never been higher, Thank but you. I think the Thank choice you, has president. never been clear. Yes, I the vice president and senator also sharply disagreed over the push to confirm Supreme Court nominee Amy Coney Barrett before Election Day. We hope she gets a fair hearing. And we particularly hope that we don't see the kind of attacks on her Christian faith that we saw before. Let the American people fill that seat in the White House and then we'll fill that seat on the United States Supreme Court. The second presidential debate is scheduled to take place next week in the battleground state of Florida. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Salt Lake City. Well, President Trump says he will be at the second presidential debate. Former Vice President Joe Biden says he will only move forward if the president no longer has COVID-19. Well, President Trump released a new video on Twitter praising the doctors and treatment he's received after testing positive for COVID-19. The president returned to the Oval Office today for the first time in nearly a week, where he received updates on Hurricane Delta and coronavirus stimulus talks. Deborah Alfaron is at the White House with more. In a taped Twitter message, the president praised the experimental Regeneron antibody cocktail used to treat his coronavirus. But they gave me Regeneron and it was like unbelievable. I felt good immediately. I want to get for you what I got and I'm going to make it free. You're not going to pay for it. President Trump returned to the Oval Office Wednesday for briefings. His doctors released a memo stating that labs are now showing detectable levels of antibodies. Also that he's been symptom free for the past 24 hours and his vitals continue to be stable. These are great professionals. They've done a fantastic job. After halting coronavirus bill talks, the president is now urging Congress to pass standalone bills for $1,200 stimulus checks and relief funding for the airline industry and small businesses. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi addressed the administration's about face on ABC's The View. He saw the political downside of his statement of walking away from the negotiations. All he has ever wanted in the negotiation was to send out a check with his name printed on it. Meanwhile, White House officials are pushing back on criticisms tying the COVID outbreak there to the September 26th Supreme Court announcement. Few attendees wore masks and there was no social distancing during that event. We actually know that some of the infection here within the White House uh, did not come from that event. The president's senior advisor, Stephen Miller, is among the latest to test positive for COVID-19. Miller is one of several to test positive after attending presidential debate prep sessions. Deborah Alfaron, CBS News, the White House. Oh, this evening, the president also tweeted that he spoke with UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson on the phone. Johnson also received treatment for the coronavirus earlier this year. 
COVID related deaths across the state of Montana have now reached 203. The latest, a Bighorn County woman in her 80s, a man in his 60s, and another woman in her 70s. County health officials pleading with residents to stay home when they can, wear a face mask if they need to enter the public. Active cases spiking across the state. The 700 plus reported today topples yesterday's record of 504. However, MT, uh, MTN reports today's number includes more than 200 cases in Missoula County that we had already reported yesterday. There are now more than 5,200 active cases in the state, more than 16,000 total confirmed cases. The state reports 235 people are now hospitalized. The state will also begin publicly displaying COVID hospital capacity tomorrow. That report will show bed capacity, number of ventilators and ICU capacity. That announcement from Governor Bullock today during a news conference. The governor will direct 200 million in CARES Act dollars to the Unemployment Insurance Trust Fund. Bullock says the move is to prevent Montana businesses from experiencing an 85% spike in their tax rate. Yellowstone and Flathead counties reported the lion's share of new cases in the past month. Bullock again affirmed his position on leaving stricter COVID mandates in the hands of local governments. It's our actions as Montanans that have brought our total case count to over 16,000 and to nearly 200 deaths. It's our actions as Montanans that have stressed our hospital resources and it's our actions as Montanans that can flatten the curve. Bullock also urged Congress and the president to find common ground and pass another COVID stimulus package to help financially impacted Americans. Local restaurant owner accused of sexual assault pleads not guilty in Yellowstone County District Court today. Sheehan Howard Washen made his initial appearance and was released on his own recognizance. The Yellowstone County Attorney's Office charged the 48-year-old Shen with one felony count of sexual intercourse without consent and two misdemeanor counts of sexual assault. Shen is the part owner of the Carney Brazilian Grill and Wild Ginger Japanese Steakhouse and the Asian Sea Grill. Court documents state that Shen sexually assaulted a 28-year-old woman and a 34-year-old woman at Kearney. He's to have no contact with the victims or enter businesses where alcoholic beverages are sold except his businesses. The judge also ordered Shen to forfeit his passport to the clerk of court. We now know the name of the man killed in a fatal shooting in Central Billings this weekend. Yellowstone County Coroner Cliff Brophy says 33-year-old Kyle Reed of Billings died from a single gunshot wound to the head. The events unfolded just after 8 o'clock Sunday in the 1300 block of Custer Avenue. There have been no arrests or charges filed. The suspect had scratches on his head. The victim was also armed with a gun. The building students are now in their seventh week of school amid the COVID-19 pandemic. And needless to say, the school day looks a little different with masks and social distancing. While well, some students have been struggling to learn in the remote classroom. Q2's Mitch Leggy touched base with a local tutoring service to help. Billings parents, students and teachers have seen massive changes to the education system since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic. Olga Prather, owner of Sylvan Learning Center in Billings, has been helping students throughout the first few weeks of school. Things have changed for education in Montana and across the country. And what I'm most excited about seeing is that Everybody is really stepping up to the plate. About 2,500 Billings School District 2 students are doing their learning online. Prather said the first step to success in the virtual classroom is using the right mindset. If we go into it thinking this is never going to work, then it's, you know, it's going to be difficult. But, you know, I, what I'm seeing is that we're adjusting. We're getting it. So maybe at the beginning it's difficult and kind of working together as a team. So teachers and parents really communicating and talking about what's most effective. Prather has three tips that any student, whether remote or in person, can take away to see more success. And they're all pretty simple. First, set a schedule. Second, don't put off that homework. And third, establish clear communication between teachers, students, and parents. Sometimes I see kids um, fall behind. They just don't do it daily. I say again, set a routine, 
complete the work as early as possible. Kids do better in the morning and make sure that you're checking in with the teacher that you have everything completed and all expectations are met. Someday when the world is on the other side of the COVID-19 pandemic, Prather said she hopes educators learn from some of the successes in remote learning. In particular, she mentioned how technology has widened access to help for students across rural Montana. In Billings, Mitch Laggy, MTN News. Sylvan has been seeing students all day during the pandemic since remote students are less tied to the schedule of the school bell. Well, just one week after Billings students were allowed to cheer from the stands at Dallas Stadium, that run has come to an end. The school district announcing today there will be no students allowed into the doubleheader on Friday. West plays at four against Great Falls High. Senior and Skyview play at seven. Two family members per player will still be allowed to attend. Still ahead on the MTN 9 o'clock news, seeing green Montana's Senate race already breaking spending records with four weeks left before the election. We'll break down the numbers, but first, Bob McGuire's up next with your full seven-day forecast. We'll be right back.